And this is the meaning of the Pasuk. Hashem, lift up your hand that they should not see. So we explained that the concept of the Yad Rama is, is the opposite of the Tzimtzum of the other two Yados which are Chesed and Gvura, whereas Yad Rama is the concept of Tiferes, and it's the concept of Geus, of, of, of height and haughtiness, the an union of Keser. Which the Tiferes goes up to Hashem's crown, Yeshaya Chav of Yud Aleph, this is the Pasuk in Yeshaya, Zor Chilik Bez Mishpatim Daf Kuf Yud Bez Ufamud Bez, Emek HaMelech Kuf Ches Bez Bechaya Kuf Lamed Dalet, and look at those and look and look at in those places. About this Pasuk Vishlomar we can say Meenin Kasher Kodish Parhumutsi Hama Minartika Azrishaim Nikhvinhu. That our sages said that when the Holy One Blessed Be He takes the sun out of its shield, then the wicked will be judged by it, they will be burnt. Kah lo yuchlu kabala gulish me bichnis Rama Yadakhu. Similarly, they will not be able to receive the revelation from the concept of your high hand. So I guess it's beyond the concept of the Chesed and Gvura, and therefore it represents this idea. Peter should explain, specifically when your hand is high, which is the concept of exaltedness and, and haughtiness, like we said. As I bal ram, then the nations of the world will not see the godly light, meaning to say that there is not going to be this nurturance to the other side. Because um, the, he goes upwards in his watching over the world so that they should also not receive, because in general, Everybody can receive from the Maki, from the encompassing light, but if you truly go higher, it only goes to Israel. Like we said before, with the concept of the Samamis, the Hechle Melech, the poisonous spider in the palace of the king that gets overlooked, but if the king actually would scrutinize in his true height what belongs there and what doesn't, then it would only go to the right place and, and not to the Samamis. Like the Pasuk says, Hashem is exalted upon all nations, Masha Nasa Mehem, Rama Misnasa, this that he becomes exalted and high above them, Lefishu Go Gauga, it's because he's exalted upon exalted Dafka, specifically Kanal. This is all in the beginning of a, of a service to Hashem. So that's all bit layesh. But after you find his heart trustworthy, like by Avraham Avinu, you do not need this level of coarseness of haughtiness. Like we said, the Shminis should be Shminis of the Talmud Chacham, the eighth of the eighth of haughtiness of the Torah scholar. Avraham and Avraham, that first Yishmuel came out of him in the beginning, when he was on the lower lower level of Avraham, Shnim Tzalavavu Neaman, Gam Behaschal Savoda that his heart was trustworthy also in the beginning of his service. That from when you have the Maki, then the flow goes also to those who are not fitting, like Yishmael. Because everything is incomparable, is is not. So, but the, the Torah scholars, they need to be in the beginning of their service, and we have coarseness. So he, he differentiates here between the way Avraham did Avoda and the way everybody else does. Because Avraham 
even in the beginning of his avoda, his heart was trustworthy. But nonetheless, it's still the makif still went to the place that wasn't fitting. So the Talmud Chacham in the beginning of the avoda, they don't want to give anything to the other side. And I guess their heart also is not on the level of Avraham, of, of Levav Neaman. Therefore, they have to have a certain level of this coarseness of haughtiness. Because I guess Avraham Avinu had the bit of right from the beginning in comparison, and not the Gossus. It's interesting then that Avraham also, even on the beginning, would, would give to the, to the other side. Also, in this contemplation, in grasping godliness in a way of the godliness encompassing and surrounding creation. And because of this contemplation, it spreads into love and fear. So this type of love and fear in, in the contemplation also is a state of existence when you are in existence that serves. Because there is someone who's understanding this, there is an existence that is grasping these ideas. And it appears to him this grasping of the idea to be some existence. But the truth is that no thought can grasp him at all. So this, that you have in, in, imagined that you understand something, is actually not the absolute truth. It's the truth in the understanding of the ideas and, and the godliness. But the absolute truth is that there's nothing else at all. In the essence and being of the infinite light, that's above the order of graded of order of creation. So instead of saying Yishmoel, in the bottom on the Shulei Hagiloyon, it says that in Torah, or it says instead of Yishmoel Haklipos. And instead of saying Ba'atzmus Mhus or in Sof, it says Torah, or it adds Elukus. In Ba'atzmus Mhus Elukus, in the essence and the being and essence of godliness. And explains because he is above the concept of filling and surrounding creation, and beyond all levels of the gradative process of creation, therefore this type of contemplation is secondary, in the end, if you reach the, the, the highest level of service, to cleave and attach yourself, if you merit to cleave and attach yourself to the essence. Okay, so back inside. That the truth is that in comparison to the essence, it's like you're not there, that you, you're in, in your own eyes, for example, like the chaff and straw. In comparison to the, to the essence, the main thing. So to all of the reasonings and the understanding and contemplation, all the days of, of the service of love and fear that you had in the beginning, is only secondary in comparison to the main thing. <coughs> Because when you reach the concept of the essence of the infinite light, all of the reasoning as he is filling creation and surrounding creation are completely incomparable in comparison to the essence. Like it says, who do I have in the heavens? And I do not desire you in, on the earth. The heavens and the earth being would, would be the, the encompassing and the filling of creation. And that if you don't, I don't want you on those levels because that's not the essence. So now we can explain the allegory of the chaff that surrounds the, the wheat, the stalk of wheat, and protects it from the heat and from the moisture. And it says on the bottom, just like the chaff that guards the wheat. 
And so back inside Kacha so so to in, in the allegory, Benitsu Tzaluki, the godly spark, Shinikra Or Zarua, that's called the sown seed of light, that's just like the seeds of, of the wheat, allegorically, that's sown. So too, the, the godly spark of the soul is this, like this sown light that is sown. Utsumeach, and it grows milamata from below. The omnam, however, hayakala v'nevad mipnei riboy or bimutaro satanugim. It would be destroyed and lost from all of the many lights of of ex, extra pleasures, chitzonim, external pleasures, and that that would be the heat that would destroy the wheat. Ukiyotsa and the like, that the, when the soul is enclosed in the body down here, it needs protection. Or from the coldness that it would have, not to be excited about godliness. And that's like the laziness that that is likened to the rotting of the um, seed in the ground. But because of the chaff, the wheat is able to stand and grow and greaten itself in, with the soul, in the soul with love and fear without anything stopping it. And what causes this? This is the coarseness and the height that a person feels in their service of Hashem. That they, as an existence that wants to serve Hashem, does not want to be separate. And this is like, what is the separation? That would be, like the rotting of the seed, and to be burned in the heat of desires, and the like. It uh, has to uh, go through all the coarseness. So, so this this um, haughtiness that you have is able to overcome everything that the animal soul could throw at it, whether it's from the heat or from the moisture, the, the desires or, or the, the laziness that try to overcome a person, but a person feels haughty and attached to a sham, and that overcomes it. Alderach Marshall, for example, and because of this, the, the spark of light of, of godliness in the soul becomes greater and grows further constantly with love and fear until it's completely grown like it's written like we say from the, the passage in Yecheskel and the Haggadah about the uh, allegorically the, the, the child that's found in the field that grew and and we were like this this girl that uh, became grown into a beautiful woman, so too we became a nation. and we grew. And then when it's complete, you throw away actually the chaff. And then the tenth, meaning the level of completeness, will be holy for Hashem, completely nullified, and and get, getting rid of the age. And the allegory is that when you the souls reach their completeness of of growth, then you're attached to His essence and being may be blessed. The gam kolat time in vasagos, and also all the reasoning and understanding shayashum elipri that used to guard your fruit, but tailing benoflim who they fall away and are nullified. Mipnei shem inyan levav neaman hanol because this is the concept of the trustworthy heart, like we said. Kamuokin mamish melamayla lamata sotu, truly from above to below. 
with an arousal from above, hanimshach that's drawn down, or 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 as it says in Torah, hanimshol that that was allegorized, kukach that this is so she betchila nasa yisrus l'sata bebechinas gasus v'isnasus that first you have this arousal from below and we have haughtiness and and lifting up. And, uh, but in Torah or it says, not that it's just the Lasata, the arousal from below in the beginning, it's an arousal from above in the beginning. That we're, we're, so we preface by saying we have this arousal from above. And first you have an arousal from below, and then you have an arousal from above, or you have this arousal from above, Hanimshach, or Hanimshol, that is drawn an arousal from above. That what's the allegory, the arousal from above, in a way of haughtiness? I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the nafka mina between the two girsos here is, whether or not the haughtiness is an arousal from above or, or an arousal from below. At any rate, it could be that this feeling of, of attachment when you feel this haughtiness and lift it up could be something that's given from above that, that that prevents you from falling down or it could be something of your own avoda that you do, that you feel this extra haughtiness. At any rate, whether or not this is is an arousal from above or, or from below, this is what's called the chaff, the tevin, and the straw, lamaila above. Bechadesh aydeze lo yipol haor berikavon vikilayon. In order so that the light will not fall into into rotting or or destruction, hachom of of the of the heat. <clears throat> so it's I guess it's whether it's your own avoda that prevents it. These two years or or whether or not this is a help from above, in the beginning that prevents it. Yeah, Hashem protects you from falling in a vote. And this is from the, it protects you from the nurturance to the other side, the Ayin Sarim of the 70 ministering angels, the Fishu Ramal because he's exalted upon all the nations. And then, after it's grown to give to, to give the seeds of the righteous which is the life of the world which is corresponds with the sphere of Yesod I guess from Tiferes it goes to Yesod because that's what the, the allegory of, of sowing the seeds is the is, is in the sphere of the concept of Yesod and the hardiness which is the chaff is the concept of Tiferes, which is the Makif. In Sarech Lebechin Nesmutz V'Tevin Chulu, then you do not need the chaff and the straw. The calls Zman Shulu Nimra HaKeri, Pater Mina Maizra. And as when when the chaff and, and is still there, and, and the, the you haven't separated it out and, and, and cleaned the top off the bin of the wheat, so it, it doesn't, you're not obligated in Maizra Canal yet. Like we said, Hasiri Yehi represents this idea of completely free of chaff. And that's the concept of the student of wisdom has to have this coarseness one eighth of an eighth. And that's one portion out of 64. Below and that's why 64, not 63, because 63 is the word sag, which means coarseness. Right. But one portion out of 64 has in it this idea of gasus. Nonetheless, it crowns it like the chaff to the, to the wheat. That is, that it crowns him with his crown of haughtiness, visnasus, and exaltedness. 
From this it guards you from anything bad. And you grow and continue. So to above, it crowns the light that's sown to the righteous. With the crown of his supernal haughtiness. As it's written, that Hashem is king and and wears the garment of haughtiness.